Yeah, what's cracking, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Prison Break Raw. I'm your host, the one and only Big JD. Go ahead, give this channel a subscribe, share, leave some messages or comments, hit the thumbs up for the like, notification bell to be informed on all episodes when they drop. Most importantly, if you enjoy this content, please feel free to share it. Share it to your family, your friends, your coworkers, anywhere and everywhere in your social media platforms. Let's get this raw and uncut material out there to the millions that don't know we are here. It is with great pleasure that I finally got this interview off of the drawing board and onto the screen. It's been in the making for some time. You know, me and this man have been talking for a minute. He has a channel. I have a channel. Uh, we come from a lot of the same background as far as being in the California Department of Corruptions and Rehumiliation on several occasions. Uh, this man's got a lot of time invested in the system, as do I. Um, we're from two sides of uh, two sides of two different forts, yet we've shared the same struggle in a lot of ways, and you're going to hear all about it in this uh, wonderful conversation right here. Um, this ain't going to be your typical interview where it's like a Q&A. We're just going to be chopping it up because that's the way this man runs his show. He's just chopping it up with you. Unlike me where, you know, I'm kind of like a newscaster or a media outlet or an independent journalist. This man right here, he's that, he's that guy that we used to love to have in a court holding tank or in some mm. kind of hoarding tank somewhere like that where he just keeps, he keeps the time moving by yes. engaging us. In, in conversation. Uh, yeah. It's my great pleasure to introduce to all of you, for those of you that don't know who he is, Splinter from Prison POV. What's up, my boy? How are you? Welcome to Prison Break Raw, my man. Good, brother. Good. Glad I'm here. Glad I'm yeah. here, homeboy. Nothing but love and respect. And likewise, man. Right back at you. So uh, you've, been, you've been running your channel for a little while, I've seen, and, and you've been on Josh's show. Have you been on any – have you been on Badgers too, right? Badgers, yes. Yeah. Recovery like four times. Okay. That's Nicole. Yeah, I've been on there with Nicole. Yeah, shout out to Nicole from Real Talk Recovery. Been on there. Um, so, like, I mean, what what prompted you to, to like, reach out and, and do this whole YouTube thing? I was coming off of methadone in about September. I got laid off my job. I got laid off to kick the methadone. I started detoxing, so I started a channel called Methadone Detox. Okay. Where I was, you know, uploading every other day, like, here's how I feel. And while I was doing the YouTube thing, I started noticing all these prison channels, man. And it sort of caught my eye. And, you know, it's like one for one. Like, they, I heard a story. Like, oh, I got one for you. Like, let me get in there and tell mine. You know what I'm saying? Let me yeah. represent. <laughs> yeah, I got you. So I was yeah. man, I want to get in there and get some. So I took my channel from Methadone Detox to Prison POV. And it's been cool, man. It's been great. Met a lot of awesome people, brother. That's the best part about it. I did not anticipate that. So I'm a private guy and I don't open up much. And a lot of times people reach out and want to talk. And I'm like, that's what I'm here for. To talk and help these people, you know? And so it's been really cool, man. It's been a learning experience. You know what? You have, um, you have a unique gift as far as your delivery system. Like, I don't, I don't think you should change a thing, to be honest with you. I don't think you need all, like, the fancy intros and all that stuff like that. I like to do it just because, you know, I'm like a meticulous for detail type of a person. Um, mm -hmm. But you're, you're just like that guy. You just, boom, you just come out and you just talk. I mean, you just straight shoot and talk to these guys and gals. And, and it works, man. It's just like, you know, your, your channel is the kind of thing that when I click on it, I think, well, you know, I'm only going to spend a couple of minutes listening to this guy, but I find myself just drawn in. Like, I can't, I can't, like a deer in the headlights, man. I can't stop listening to what you're talking about, man. It's awesome. Yeah. Wish I had that, you know? You do. You do have yeah. that. You have your own gift of gab, brother. You wouldn't be doing what you're doing if you didn't. Yeah, I appreciate so. that. Appreciate that. Yes, sir. So, you know, tell, tell us a little bit about yourself, you know, like your, your, your claim to fame as far as the criminal world or, or being infamous, in other words, as, as Splinter. You know, and I've, I've met quite a few splinters in the woodpile over the years. And, and it's funny. Is, is it true that the name splinter, is, is it me? Is it, is it kind of like, you know, like a little man type of a title? It's like you were a little dude. You were yeah. a little, you're a little wood. And like, maybe you were, you, you know, you had a mentor type of a figure in your world that was like the big version of you. And they used to call you his splinter. 
Is that is yeah, that how you got? No. I got it from is a little part. You got that right. But when yeah. I was first time at county jail, well, no, not my first time. I'd been there a couple, you know, did a week in here and there. But first time doing five months doing time there, I was chilling my dog Ronnie Owens, and I was smaller than everybody. I'm a small guy. I'm slim and trim like a bicycle rim. Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I never heard I'm that. Smaller one. than smaller than everybody, and you start calling me Splinter. Like you're not big enough to be a wood. You're a Splinter type of thing. Start out just like it's a joke, but it's stuck. And then I got out and came back and people, I introduced myself, hey, my name's Chris. And so I'll be like, hey, Splinter, what's up, dog? You're back, you know? And I get out, come back again, introduce myself as Chris. Someone recognized me, hey, what's up, Splinter? You can't buck the nickname. It's like you're trying to hide from something. You just got to roll with it. So I start off with a joke and it's stuck and I just, you know, Splinter it is what it is. But I never, no one ever made the Ninja Turtle rat connection until YouTube, until people started trolling me in the comments. I knew it was there. No one, ever, no one wanted to go there, brother. That's Elf in the room. Don't compare me to the rat on Ninja Turtles, please. But someone finally did. And um, definitely it's not where my name came from. Most definitely not. But, yeah, from being a little wood. Yes, sir. Yeah, see? Goes to show you that I know what I'm talking about when it comes to these things, man. And, you know, I've heard, it, I've heard it the way you've described it. You know, the little dude, the littlest guy of the pack, you know, like the run of the litter kind of a thing. And, and it's never been like, it's never been like, a way of like talking shit about the guy. It's just like, you know, it, 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 it's kind of like a badge of honor in a lot of ways. The way, the way I've, I've learned it is it, you know, it's, here's the little dude. He's the run of the litter, but he's with it. He's mm -hmm. there. He's there with us. You know, it's kind of like, you know, calling somebody Pee Wee or little man. It's the same thing. You know what I mean? Splinter is like, it's a unique specifically for the wood pile. Yes. I've, you know, I've always, I've no, I've always noticed that I've met quite a few splinters. One guy, you know, they, his name was, I remember him. I don't remember exactly where he's from, but he was called Big Wood. And he had a little sidekick with him. He used to call him his splinter, you know? Yeah. And then I always, I always ask like, where does that name come from? And they said, well, it's usually, it's usually the, you know, the smallest wood in the pile. They call mm -hmm. him the splinter, you know? So. Yeah. I met one other one too. They called him splinter wood. I met him at Soledad. He's actually a lifer from Bakersfield. Right. Yeah. Awesome, brother. So, um, you got a pretty good, uh, interesting approach to, like, your stories. I mean, your stories are just, and they're all about you. So, like, the, the, the main thing, you know, that, that always piques my interest in all these other channels is I'll, I'll peep in on all of them, especially if I find out they're, they're you know, they're Cali. I'm going to check them all out and I'm going to, you know, see what they're about. I'm going to feel them out and see, you know, what's up with this dude, you know, like where, where is his background? You know, is he exposing too much game? All that stuff like that. And, you know, we know that, that it's a serious problem exposing game where a lot of other people that have never been in the system, they don't understand why it irks so many of us, why it would irk somebody like me, why it would it irk somebody like Badger, Mitch, you know, others as well that are out there is that because we know that there are people that are still inside that could possibly be affected by the exposing of the game. So yeah. what, what, what is your take on like some of these channels that are out there that are basically just talking too much? I think it's a big no, no. I don't honestly, I don't watch too much other channels. I mean, I watch the ones I like, the ones I like don't do it, but I know what you're talking about referring to and I haven't really seen it. It's a big no, no. Just for example, I remember one time at pretrial, county jail, we had this sick way hitting, man. We were doing it constantly. The cops knew nothing about it. It involved a straw and a small crack. That's all I'll say. Yeah. You know, held both ends and boo had that small crack on boy, we were in. Someone gave up game, dude. It shut that down. It fucking ruined us. We didn't have that going for us no more, bro. Just shut us down. No more crack, no more straw popping through the small crack. Because someone talked. You know, that's, that's, I, I, I recently talked about how exposing game had actually caused a whole lot of constipation in the federal system. Because, see, in the feds, you know, the store being what it is, it's much different than the canteen of the state. But the one thing that we used to get in the feds, and, and it was something that was a godsend, a savior to a lot of us, was um, Metamucil, right? You have a lot of, you got, you got a lot of older dudes and, you know, a lot of that prison food, that, that bulk blow up slop shit that they feed. It's the same thing in the feds. Now the food ain't any different than the state anymore. You know, they moved away. They started moving towards what's called this national menu. 
thanks to good old Michelle Obama, you know, with her stock investments in certain companies that supply these prisons now. A lot of people don't realize that, but that's how it happened. Because it's every time, like, a lot of these old timers would go to, the, go to the chow hall, they'd walk out and they'd be like, thanks, Michelle. Thanks, Mrs. Obama. Every time, you know, and I never understood. I'm like, why is that? Well, because she's the one that pushed this national menu in the Department of Justice. And I'm like, well, well I don't know the difference. They ex described it to me. They had steaks, lobsters, all that shit in the feds. Yeah. Big giant fudge cakes and everything. They moved this national menu and it changed from steaks and lobsters to freaking slop. And, and turkey a la king and chicken a la king. And then there's even one time where one of these companies accidentally mixed up the orders and sent a whole bunch of dog food oh, to, shit. to the federal prison system. And, and um, it, it was, ran with it. yeah, no, I, everybody was eating and thought that it tasted funny. Come to find out it was dog food that was actually yeah. given to them. Um, they would have said it, it tastes better. Yeah. It happened last week. That shit was bomb all of a sudden. Yeah, but I'm telling you, like, the, the Metamucil is always a good thing because, you know, it makes you, keeps you regular, and it's just good for overall health. However, exposing game, some jack wagon on lockup showed them how to make a knife out of Metamucil. Because that shit, it, I mean, if you let it sit, it, it turns into a piece of glass, you know? So this guy made a knife, and I started calling him Poop Knives. That was my wow. new nickname for him. So then somebody that worked in the Bureau of Prisons saw that, went back and, and complained to the Department of Justice, hey, we got to get rid of this Metamucil. They're making knives out of it. Damn. So now everybody was back to having a straight clogged bowels, man, straight, straight constipation because of exposing game. That's and people bad. don't realize the littlest things, right? And it's just why that experience was, was one of the main things is like in some spots that I was at in the feds, like in some areas, you know, there, there'd be homies that are running the show. It'd be like, you turn lock up on this fucking TV, you're, you're going to straight get boobot, man. Oh, I've seen it. We don't watch that. We don't watch cops. We don't watch, we don't watch lock up. We don't no. watch any of that bullshit. 60 days in, none of that crap. Because, you know, I could I never mean, understand. Yeah. I mean, that show Cheaters. Remember that one? Yeah. I I want, it over that. They're watching, they're beating this chick up, and they're just like, fuck this silly ass show, bro. None of that shit. Yeah, you know, I, mean, I, I could never understand why people in there would watch cops. Like, you want to go watch cops? Take your chair and go sit up in front of the fucking podium and look at the, look at the cops. You want to watch cops? Yeah. I'm not to look at them. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Why, why do you want to watch that shit? It never, never fucking made sense to me. But, yeah, yeah, that exposing game shit, you know, and, and it's just like you can't tell these people nothing, though, man. They just don't – people just don't get it, you know? They just mm -hmm. don't get that – the reason why we say that is, is people are already taken out of society. And if you're, if, if you're on here making it harder for them, then yeah, those people probably, if they ever go back inside, they're probably going to get whacked. Oh yeah. Straight up. We're giving up game. Giving up way too much game, man. So you're from Bakersfield. Yes, sir. Born and raised. You ever run around up there in Old Dale? Constantly, all the time, brother. <laughs> Yeah. Awesome. yeah, you know, they used to have a lot of jokes about Oil Dale, man, when I was in Wasco and stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, we're like, you, you, know, you know you're talking to a wood from Oil Dale just by the, the amount of teeth he has left in his mouth. Yeah. <laughs> Straight methed out over there, bro. Big time. Yeah. Yep. But um, a lot of crazy, a lot of crazy woods coming up out of Oil Dale. Yeah, for sure. It really is. That's a different kind of spot up there. Mm -hmm. Um. So I mean, when like, when did you first start going into the system? Did you start out in YA, or did you start out and just go in as an adult? Or I did not go to YA. I did six months, and I was fourteen for a burglary. I went to something called Kern Youth Facility. It's weird because I did five days in juvenile hall for the burglary, then I got six months for not going to school. And so in Kern County, there's two options: you go to Camp Owens, or you can go to KYF. And they sent me to KYF. Next step would have been YA, but I got out, moved in with my dad, played it pretty cool. I didn't really mess up. I was an adult. I didn't get caught for messing up. And then I was an adult, started going to county jail. I was fucking up in the late 90s, and I caught my first term in 2000. So you've been, you've, been, you've, been to, you've, been, you've been to quite a few different joints then, right? Yep. I'm the king of that scounding, bro. I've never, ever got out reporting my parole officer. So I have two numbers, a P number and an F number. and I. Eight, eight um, violations, brother, just for scounding. 
Oh, dude, I, I, could, I could probably give you a run for your money. I could probably I give you a run. I burned up. I burned up two prison numbers in violations. So I got eight years in violations alone. Yeah. I never reported, bro. Never, never, never. Scound every time from the gate. Yeah, did you ever scound out of state? Nope. Never made it that far. Thought that's about I, it. Thought about it. That's what I used to do. I used to go out of state, far out of state, and they they'd fly all the way out there and come get you, and then fly you back, and they take you to a. Sac County Jail, and from there they take you to Tracy, and then from Tracy you'd go to whatever region you landed out of. Yeah. Since my, my region was down there in the southern part of the region, the southern area of like Orange County and stuff was where my parole was out of. I had to go to Chino, so I had to go to two different reception centers every time I absconded. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy, man. So the um, reason why, the reason why I absconded so much is because my first term it actually went on a pill I, I feel like i'd done dirty for terrorist threats fight with my ex-wife over the kids she got remarried i found out from her best friend she was going to split her new husband got transferred to another job i was lotus i wasn't really seeing him because i couldn't really pass this drug test but i mean i'm going to get clean and work it out don't mean i don't want them you know what i'm saying they're just going to dip out of town with me long story short i found but they I, they cut ties i didn't know where they were at or nothing I found out where she worked and I called her because I wanted her to bring my daughters to my grandmother's house for my daughter's birthday. <coughs> she didn't. I called and harassed her at her job. I called her like 30 times and I was threatening her. Like, you don't bring my kids, I'm gonna kill all you guys, blah, blah, blah. So I was threatening her. But they gave me a charge for every phone call. Like when I charged, when I called at 1030, they gave me a felony. And at 1045, another charge. And 11 o'clock, another charge. Left 15, another charge. And stacked all these charges, dude. Instead of just giving me one charge, bro. Threw the book at me. That's like some double jeopardy type of shit double right jeopardy, there. Yeah. It was yeah. one course of conduct. So I said, so when I got out, my case is on appeal. I said, I'm not going to report the parole because it's going to go through appeal. I'm not going to have a case. I won't have a parole officer. And then I lost it. I said, what? A parole, bro. I'm never going to report those fools. Yeah. They're scandalous, man. You know what I mean? So yeah. um, the, the one thing is, is um, you, you, did, you did time at, at Mule Creek once upon a time, right? Yes, 2002, level one. Yep. Was active. Yeah, and that was, that was before the complete switchover of Mule Creek. Which I think it was in 2005. Yeah. Yeah. That was CMP West, and they're bringing a bunch of dudes from Mule Creek. And they're telling me that they totally, there was already a lot of S and Y, don't get me wrong, when I was at Mule Creek, but just not the whole thing. But did I they, have, but the level one yard, that was the E yard there, right? Yeah, yeah. And that was good. That's usually always good, you know? Yeah, every every level one yard and all these two seventies are always E yard, you yes. know A B C D, they're always the two seventy design yards. Um, e yard was always you know the support yard or the level one yard, but did they? I mean, did they make that support level one yard E yard? Did they make that S and Y eventually, or is that still just GP? No, they, they did eventually make that S and Y. I believe in two thousand five. So the whole prison by two thousand five was S and Y. Whole thing, Jimmy. Whole damn thing, bro. Whole kit and caboodle. <laughs> yeah, because there's some controversy around, you know, particular people that were actually there after 2005, but we won't get into that. Right. I'm sure you've heard all about it. I've heard something about it. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um. Yeah, I mean, that, that, that's the thing. I've never personally, I've never been to Mule Creek, never, never even requested to go there. You know, they ask you, where do you want to go? Like, you know what, I want to go – Uh. I want to go to Chino, and they end up sending you to freaking Pelican Bay, you know? Yeah. Yeah, they don't care. They just send you just wherever, man. It was very active when I was there, though, man. It really was. It was, it was cracking. There's a lot of northerners, only a handful of southerners. You know, that tension was there. And there was even a lot of tripping between the woods, NorCal and SoCal woods, man. So I know. My, my, cousin, was at, my cousin was at the ER to Calipat, and um, he ended up catching a shoot term there and went to Pelican Bay because he stomped some dude out in there. Some dude showed up, and he had, you know, he had some seat sniffing type of a charge on him, mm -hmm. and uh, my cousin just he didn't he didn't even he didn't even ask questions, man. He just took flight on the dude. While everybody else was having a little fucking powwow trying to figure out the dude about that guy. He just fucking got up and walked over there and just just cracked the Damn dude. It. Yeah, I, I mean that's just how they are. Like in my family, like those woods that are over there, my cousins, my uncles, they're all from IE, mm -hmm. and they. They just, they're, they're the kind of people out there in IE that they just handle their business and then they ask questions later. You know, yeah. take care of it now and figure it out when it's all said and done, figure it out. Because 
you know, the, the philosophy that I've always gotten from my cousins is that if you question it and you take too long to make a decision, that dude can run out and get away. Yeah. And it's your bad. I've seen it in the feds, man. People, you know, sitting around trying to, trying to have a court case about what they're going to do about some guy. And next thing you know, that dude is like, he's slipping further and further yeah. out. Next thing you know, he's out the door. He's gone. And they're like, yeah, let's get him. They're like, where is he? Well, he's already fucking halfway across the compound. He's gone. You know yeah. what I mean? See ya. Now we need to get the dude to slow play. Yeah. You guys missed out. You guys missed out. You know what I mean? Fucking. So have you ever had like dealing with like shot callers and stuff like that? Have you ever had, you don't know, it's quite different with, with different wood cars as opposed to like Sudanios and everything. But, um, you know, I mean, we, we, we have our issues with, 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 with Yaveros or shot callers. Do you guys like ever have that dude who's just a real piece of shit? You know, just stirring up all kinds of drama and all that stuff like that. Have you ever had to contend with something like that? Yeah, these don't last long. Yeah. You know, because they're just looking for a reason to take you out. They're going to place your ass anyway. So, usually the dude has keys, has a lot of haters. So, you better have a tight program. You know, the unique thing, too, about, about the wood pile that I think should be mentioned is, and I talked about this with Mitch. I've talked about this with Badger is that there's no, like, one wood that rules over everybody as, like, the fucking kingpin kind of guy, you know? Some people get that some people get that misconception going because people would push that narrative. But the way that I've always seen it, and correct me if I'm wrong, I could be wrong, but I've always seen it that the woods usually, wherever county they're from, if you're from IE, they got a dude that's pretty much running IE. You're from San Diego, dude from San Diego's running San Diego. You're from Orange County, LA, Kern County, so on and so forth. Is this, is this how it generally runs? Pretty much. I need to tell you from experience. When I call my four year term, I had the keys to C1 for all the woods, but I delegated stuff to the cars, like to Fresno. If someone came in Fresno and your homeboys were acting up, feel free to check it, let me know, and get me involved. And there was an incident where a guy came in with weird paperwork. And what it was, his uh, homegirl fell asleep and he tried to put her pants off and tried to give her oral, and she woke up. He took off running. Her and her dad tried to chase him. They couldn't find him. They called the cops. They couldn't give him a term. There's no proof they gave him a violation. He slid in our dorm. We asked for his paperwork. He's like, I can't show you my paper. There's a famous person in it. I'm like, go get that shit, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it said that he did that. Oh, and that's said, fucking classic, man. I've never heard that one before. Yeah, I can't show you. There's a famous person that's dressed in there. It's classified. So when the Fresno car is dealing with that, when, when he's telling them that I can't show you my paperwork, they came and got me. I had the building. So yeah, I would say every yard there is one kingpin because somebody has an answer for all the shit's going on. Somebody has to talk to the other races. If there's tension with the Southsiders, who are they going to talk to? There's got to be that one dude that goes to him and says, hey, look, you know, what the fuck ever. So there is one head dude, but there's also in charge of our car. Like if the Bakersfields have an issue, like even when I was had an issue with my homeboys and I have a video call, I moved over a bad call. These peanut dudes have the keys. They're trying to get involved. We pretty much bucked them and said, dude, we got this. It's big for shit. Don't even trip. Even I was saying that, and I was the one getting beat up, you know. I could have used our help, you know, but. Fuck it. We're just going to handle this bigger so style. Just us. We don't want you involved. Because it's kind of disrespectful to have another car and handling your shit. Or if someone has to get removed, you're not going to let another car do it. If someone from Bakersfield so fucks up, you know, you're going to have Orange County and Fresno remove them. It's going to have to be bigger so boys remove their own trash. So. So it's kind of like there is, but there isn't. It's still there like is, you got, you got, you got the figurehead, but at the same time, you got, you got people that pretty much handle their own cars. Exactly. That, that bigger head popped out of me be, you know. Yeah. It's kind of like Viking culture almost. Yeah. <laughs> Vikings. Yeah, I mean, if you know anything about the Vikings, I mean, they always had a, they always freaking had like all these different kings and there wasn't no real one king over all of them. But, you know, everybody, everybody kind of had an equal voice in a lot of ways. That's to be, that's to be respected, man. It's, you know. Like I said, a lot of people, a lot of people don't understand that it's hard. It's hard being, being a wood in the system, man. Cause it's one of the, one of the shortest cars in a lot of cases. Shortest car for sure. And a lot of Caucasians, man, they don't want to step up and be straight wood. Everyone comes in as wood. They get the benefit of the doubt. There's a misconception about this too. Y'all start off as being a wood, but if I mean, you don't step up and represent properly, you're going to be demoted down to a Caucasian, bro. 
I'm not going to say, hey, what's up, Wood? Did you just send me a knack? You know? That's going to be the guy that's on the first thing smoking when the shit cracks, too, huh? Yeah. That's crazy, man. Um, one thing that I did, and, and I kind of want to squeeze it in, but, you know, you're, you're free to, like, talk about it as much as you want or you don't have to, is it I got a chance to watch one of your shows where you were talking about you had experienced some abuse when you were a kid. Mm-hmm. Now, I originally went on Death's show at one time, and I told him, I said, that there's well over probably more than 80% of the people that are in prison have experienced some level of abuse. It's either been psychological, physical, mental, or sexual, or all of the above. Um, at the time, I didn't fully come out and talk about the things that happened to me, but when I was 14 years old, I had run away from home. And after being out there for a couple of weeks and everything just completely fell apart, it just seemed like shit was going from, from bad to worse. It finally got to the point to where I had contacted somebody who I thought was kind of like a father Flanagan, Boys Town type of a person. Somebody can, you know, get me off the streets, maybe put me into some kind of a program or something. And, and, and maybe I can clear my thoughts and, and, and figure out the best way to probably go home and how to, how to proceed with that and all that stuff. You know, somebody picked me up off the streets and, and took me to a location and I quickly learned it was far, far from anything that I thought it was. It was actually that I had gotten abducted by child pornographers. Uh, uh, and, um, yeah. And, and, you know, the, it started out, you know, simple as like, you know, three guys kicking back in a house. It looked like a party pad. And I was starting to kind of trip out on it. Like, well, this ain't the typical boys town type of thing. You know, they're drinking beers or smoking weed. They got an ice hockey uh, table set up in there. And it just looked like a, like a regular, like a flop house for like college dudes, you know? And one of one of the, you know, two of them, two out of the three kind of looked like college dudes. One of them guys was a scuzzy looking dude, man. To this day, I will never get his face out of my mind. Mm. But you know, I took a shower and everything, and I started to unwind and, and, you know, started smoking a little weed, playing ice hockey. And next thing you know, like, I, I got really sick. Whatever was in that weed, you know, like, I tried to get out of there, and I got beat up and subdued. And I remember waking up and looking at this woman who was basically telling them, you know, you guys fucked his face up, just chop him up and get rid of him. And they're like, no, 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 no. And they were shooting me up with something into my arms, and I woke up in a closet. To make a long story short, I ended up being held in a room with another kid and basically was told that I have to do all these things to this kid while they film it or else they're going to do all that to me. Damn, so, oh boy. so, like, we were getting drugged. You know, we had a bucket that was sitting in the room. It was the only thing that was in the room outside of the post that our legs were chained to. And we could, we could piss in that bucket, but we weren't allowed to shit in the bucket. They would come every now and again and tell us, you need to take a shit, we'll take you to the bathroom, whatnot. But it was weird, man. It was kind of like it was so surreal and so unbelievable that when I was in federal court all these years later, almost 30 years later, I finally talked about it because, you know, I I got away and the cops didn't do anything about it. But my dad took me driving around the general area of where we thought, you know, I thought the house might have been. but I couldn't remember exactly where the house was. And we just so happened to run into one of those dudes at the gas station. So my dad tailed him, followed him, took his license plate number, all that. Was talking about going to the cops, but then he got it in his mind. I'm not going to the cops. I'm going to call your grandfather. So mm-hmm. him and my grandfather basically had captured this dude and tortured him until he yeah. basically gave up the other people. And then my grandfather finished him off. Yeah. Um, we, in, we ended up like basically talking, me, my grandfather, and father. We're talking three generations of Rutherford men. You know, two of them have been in combat. My grandfather was in World War II, Korea, and it was in the first part of Vietnam. My father in Vietnam. Me, never been in the military, anything like that, but these were like professional killers. My grandfather was a professional killer. Oh, yeah. And it didn't mean shit to him because he liberated a concentration camp. And I believe he told me it was Czechoslovakia. Damn. And he told me like some of the stories of what what they did. I'm going to be doing a video on that, but... When they liberated this concentration camp, 
what they basically did to the Nazi officers afterwards. Some pretty heinous shit. Some pretty anti Geneva Geneva Convention type of shit, you know. And my grandfather said it's done. Good, bro. How we how we proceed from here is leave that up to me. But we never talk about this ever. So I kept that secret for decades, you know. But it fucked me up. It fucked oh, yeah. me up in the head all these years because I I could never seek counseling. Mm. You know. I mean, how do you go and stand in front of a counselor and tell them that, hey, my grandfather, father tortured some man to death, sawed limbs off of him and all that, poured fucking rubbing alcohol in his face, shot him a few times, chopped, you know, did all these things to him. And I'm, I'm, I'm going through a lot of like trauma behind that and by, behind what those people did to me. How could you do that? You know, you're going to, you're going to send two men that you love to prison. Yeah. Straight up, because back then, you know, they probably could have figured out who it was and where it was at and what happened and just create a murder scene out of it. But I never talked about it. My grandfather and father are long dead, you know, and I told this story on my channel. And you even had some comments in there saying, good job, J.D., way to fucking dry snitch on your grandfather and father. I'm like, well, what the fuck are they going to do? Dig up his corpse out of Arlington and put it on trial? Are they going to put? Are they going to put an urn of ashes on trial? What are they going to do about it? What are they going to do about it? Yeah, nothing. I tell the story because those men need to be need to be celebrated as heroes. Yes, absolutely. I think so. But um, yeah, just to let you know, just to you know, make you a little more comfortable. But that's what happened to me. Now I understand that you would also experience some abuse as well. Yes. Now. My last video, not my last video, I made a video, am I GP or SMY? Kind of a rhetorical question type video. But in there, I explained that no way I cannot be SMY because I was molested. I can't walk the yard, those type of creeps, bro. Give me a panic attack. It's let me out. I just can't do it. And so you left a comment in, my, in the video saying, hey, homeboy, you took a lot of balls to talk about that. I thought you were talking about the subject of am I GP or SMY. I was like, oh, okay, thanks, brother. And then we talked on the phone. You're like, yeah, I took a lot of balls to talk about to be molested and I was like oh because I barely mentioned it dude you know I didn't know if anyone picked up on it you picked up on it and we talked about it and so we're coming on and here we are we talked about it I never really talked about it either you know just actually I really haven't never got counseling told like a couple girlfriends but yeah just jump into it but like I'm getting kind of nervous but start to sweat jump into it homeboy or what well let me just tell you this before you begin you will not be ridiculed on this channel for that if anything, people will, people will admire your, your, your courage. People will admire the fact that you are a survivor. Um, just the simple fact that you didn't take your own life, because a lot of people that have been molested will take their own life. Yeah. Um, and the old bogus bullshit theory that a lot of these chomos were actually molested themselves, so they started molesting. Bullshit, dog. I hate people. That is like bullshit, bullshit because dog. here you are. A totally I hate different. it with a passion. Exactly. You know what I'm so, I mean, it, there's no fucking way. And here's the thing that I want to stress to many of you that are out there. If you've ever been molested or if you've ever been sexually abused, the last thing in your mind is, is you're looking for is to sexually abuse other people. No, I don't understand no. why these pansy ass snowflakes are trying to classify them as a, as a, Sexual victim. orientation, victim. I think they should just gas them. Oh yeah. Them. Shoot them, gas them, burn them, electrocute them, whatever it is, get rid of them. Um, there should be a lot more like cognitive training involved in getting to the like trying to trying to figure out who would be a sexual deviant. Because mm-hmm. it's obvious that a lot of these deviants have basically shown patterns or signs ever since they were kids yeah the sociopaths yeah right pick up on it I, I like where you're going with this you pick up on it early and just gas them and if you can if you're wrong a couple times oh well federal damage if you just get the most part of it huh? <clears throat> well i don't know if you would necessarily have to gas them or just basically you know, try to reprogram them to understand that the thoughts that they're experiencing and this is not something that's normal you know, yeah. 